I need you to do something for me. What is it for? I need you to post this tin. Contains a letter to Mary's mother. Of course. It'll take me two or three days to get into town and back. I've got a half day of business and banking to do anyway. Will? Please be careful. Of course. I'll see you in a few days. a long way around But I think I see something coming up from the ground And I don't know if I told you But I think you're the world yeah, And I got this feeling you could be my girl Mrs. Kerrigan. First of July, eighteen fifty. Eighteen fifty. Dear Mrs. Garrigan, I write, write to you with the heaviest of hearts. By now, I trust the terrible news has reached you regarding the tragic accident that killed your daughter Mary and your granddaughter Marianne. As a mother, I feel it is not only my duty, but also out of a sense of compassion to convey to you the events that occurred on the 24th of June, 1850. I hope this will provide you with a factual account of what happened that day, and I pray that this may, in some small way, ease your grief. As a mother myself, I continue to feel an immense sense of sadness of the passing of Mary and Marianne, and I think that I will always feel the pain of their deaths 
That day is etched permanently into my mind. My husband, who has always been a hard-working and happy man, now has a drawn and tired look. A look of sadness. He says nothing, but I know the accident has affected him. And in some ways, the events of that day will continue to haunt him. The day the accident occurred was in the midst of our winter, but it was a beautiful and sunny day with blue skies and hardly a cloud in the sky. Thomas, Mary and Mary Ann were returning to their homestead at Bolero Station after having been to the nearby township of Queenbeyan to collect supplies. They were on a section of track that is rather steep, situated about two and a half miles from our homestead here at Bobian. The track there can be a little rough sometimes, but apart from the steepness, it is a majestic section to travel through, surrounded by the tall timber of the mountain ash eucalypts and prolific with bird life. It is here that the accident occurred, for reasons known only to God, the dray that they were riding in overturned. Thomas, miraculously, was only slightly injured. Sadly, Mary Ann was killed instantly, but Mary initially survived the accident and Thomas carried her from the accident scene to our homestead seeking help. Bobian accident. 1850. The accident happened on the 24th of June 1850. The tray overturned, killing Mary Westerman and her daughter Mary Ann Westerman. The husband and father Thomas Westerman survived the accident. I remember the moment vividly. Will had come in from the morning's work and was washing for lunch. I was hanging some washing out at the rear of the homestead when the day's tranquility was shattered by the panicked voice of Thomas, yelling loudly, trying to get our attention from the ridge line he'd appeared on. Will! 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 What is it for? Is that Thomas? What happened? There's an accident to stop here. There's a thing for it to hold them off. Thomas! <laughs> what? There's an accident. What happened? <laughs> She's dead. Get the horse. Get the horse. I remember vividly the wait for Will and Thomas to return. It felt like the whole thing was a dream, that I was somehow detached from the reality of what had occurred. I wished it had been only a dream. I had covered Mary with a blanket and I hope you will gain comfort that she was not left alone. I stayed with her for the time that Will and Thomas were gone. I said a prayer for Mary and I worried so about the outcome for Mary Ann. Eventually, Will and Thomas returned and when I saw that Thomas was carrying Mary Ann, I was momentarily filled with a joyous feeling, thinking that at least the child had survived. As I approached them, I saw the forlorn looks on their faces. They were so pale and expressionless. I shall never forget those looks. Is she... Let's go inside. Mary and Mary Ann were buried near Bobian Homestead rather than at the accident site, which was some four kilometres to the southwest of the homestead. It is thought that this may have eased the grief of Thomas, knowing that the graves would be tended to by Flora. The Bobian Homestead is now only ruins after it was dismantled and removed by parks and conservation many years ago. There is a car park at the eastern end of the valley and the homestead can be reached easily by foot from there. If you're looking for the graves, there are around 200 metres west of the homestead past the creek where the remains of what used to be an old orchard are located. Uh, 
Hi, Mom. How are you? Hi, Gracie. How are you? I'm good. I'm just letting you know that I'm going out for a bushwalk. A bushwalk? Yeah. Why don't you do me for bushwalking? Uh, I was doing some reading last night about uh, the history of the place and I'm going to go check out an old homestead. I only decided this morning. Okay. I'm just a bit surprised that you're going bushwalking. Is everything okay? It's fine, Mum. I'll give you a call when I get back. i got to go. I'm driving. Oh, okay. Bye, Gracie. Take care. Bye, Mum. I will. Bye. I looked into the eyes of Will. There was so much pain. What he had been through had clearly had an impact on him. Thomas was cradling Mary Ann and his head was lowered, staring blankly down at the ground. All I could think to do was to get him back into the homestead and warm him by the fire. I took hold of his arm and at first he seemed to not understand what was occurring. But that was only a fleeting moment and the reality of the day came back to him. We began to walk slowly, inching towards the homestead until we came to where Mary was, still covered by the blanket. Thomas stopped there, standing for what seemed like several minutes, staring down at Mary's form under the blanket while still cradling Mary Ann. Without a sound and without a word, Thomas bent down on one knee and gently pulled the blanket back from Mary, lowering Mary Ann and placing her in the arms of her mother. He bent down and kissed them both before pulling the blanket back over the two of them. Thomas never made a sound nor said a word. He was so silent. After returning to the homestead, Thomas sat at the table near the fire and I sat with him. He stared blankly at the wall, still saying nothing. I thought it was best to leave him for the moment, knowing that once Will came inside, we would need to discuss the matter of Mary and Mary Ann's burials.
Thomas. Thomas. Yeah. We need to bury Mary and Marianne. Flora's right, Thomas. We need to bury them. I'll head into a Anamina B in the morning. Yeah, I'll let the troopers know. We can bury them here at the homestead. Here? Are we taken care of here? Promise to take care of them. Of course. be remembered here. You don't know me, but I feel like I know you. I found this tin. It has a letter in it Flora wrote to your mother. But it never made the mail. Never made it to your mum. I thought, you should know. I don't really know what I'm doing here. I think the best place for this is here with you. I think Flora would have wanted you to know that she'd written to your mother. And that you and Marianne had been remembered. Many times. 